beautiful students. Welcome to Unit 3, Lesson 4. We are going to begin today by opening this pop code in your Google Classroom, and you're going to change the text color to this right here, and the font size needs to be 50px. Go ahead and pause this and complete your do now. All right, folks. So once you've paused it, here's the do now. I've changed, I've selected my class heading, period heading, and changed the color of the text to this right here, and my font size to 50px, and this is what it should look like, okay? Fantastic, let's get started. So today, coders will import an external library to add style to a web page. We're gonna talk about fonts, head, body, serif, and sans serif, okay? So let's go over the exit ticket first. The exit ticket from last class, here were the questions. <clears throat> here were the questions. First one, what are all colors? What are all colors made in hex values? If you said red, green, and blue, which is A, you got it right. Question two, what color is represented here? This color is green, which is B. And question three, what color is represented here? And that would be yellow C. All right, hope that helped you. Let's get started into our lesson for today. Last class, we talked about amazing colors, right? Really being able to identify a brand by its color. And so uh, we want to use different identifiers, color being one of them, which again, we went over last week. And in, in a similar way, fonts is also really helping the consumer, right? We have all kinds of different fonts and the ways once we see these, we know right away, oh, that is Coca-Cola or Supreme or these different um, brands. So today we're gonna learn how to add fonts to websites so you can update the slide um, and really make sure that it reflects whatever brand we are discussing, all right? So we're reviewing. You have noticed a few tags here. We have body, P tag, HTML tag, title tag, all of those great tags. And let's go back here. What is the title of this website here? If you said my website, you would be correct. Where does the title show up? Does the title show up in the actual body of the website? No, right? The title shows up in the head, all right? So remember, HTML is the structure of our website. It's the skeleton. And if we keep it going, just like a skeleton, HTML includes a head and a body. So we have both of those elements. Remember, anything inside of the head does not show up on the page. All right, so the body contains the elements that are visible in the website, which we just discussed, and we put all the content for our page in the body tag. So we will be able to see content on page and more content. Those two sentences we will be able to see because they show up in the P tag in the body. So the head, again, contains things we do not see on the page, but it shows up right here on the little tab, all right? So keeping it moving, we have our opening and closing tab. The closing often has a slash in the front. The content in the head includes the title, the links to other things, and we're going to get into fonts. We're going to put something in that head and the fonts as well. So let's talk about fonts, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> so here is the word this, and we have four different font options here, okay? So there are a few types of fonts we use on the web. So serif or serif, these have feet, so Times New Roman. Sans serif, these do not have feet and they include Arial and Helvetica. And cursive, right? Uh, try to avoid using this in different professional projects. 
And we also have monospace. We often use these fonts to display code. So let's talk a little bit about accessibility and readability for fonts. So we wanna recognize when to choose fonts that are appropriate for everyone to be able to read, right? And you wouldn't sign a contract in like Cosmic Sand, right? So there are times when cursive is appropriate to use. And um, there are other times when maybe a poster for a concert you want to write in Times New Roman or something that's very clear and accessible for all people to understand. So while CSS have, has web safe fonts, Google fonts offer a lot more fun options. So you're, we're going to highlight language support, different fonts and categories of fonts. And so let's so go ahead and click on Google Fonts. You can literally Google Google Fonts and this website will come up. So as that is coming up, it should be up in a second. Awesome. So there are literally pages and pages of, oh, excuse me, of amazing fonts here, right? Literally, you can tell there's like hundreds of fonts. And so, what we're going to do when you want to use a font, let me show you what you need to do. When you want to use a font, we are going to now have the hiccups, y'all, but sorry, I cannot get rid of these things. So, you're going to have to bear, bear with me. So, when you want to use a font, you're going to have two links here. You're going to have one, which is the actual link this is where it's going to go in the head the head and then you're also going to have the css portion which is going to go in the css portion of your code okay so again you're going to take this link and you would copy it and it goes into the head and the css portion once we have our it would basically be our property all right, so let's try it together. If we, we go here to our Google Fonts page, for example, let's use this font here. So what you can do is you're gonna click on this font. You are going to then decide, um, I'm gonna se select this one right here. And when you go to embed, embed, right? There's review and then there's embed. Embed, you have the two portions we discussed, the link and then also the CSS version. So let's go ahead and try the guided practice together. So for the guided practice, our job at Sherman's Shoe Store, he needs help branding. We need to have some fun fonts for him. So we can do some of our of our fonts here. So we have Okie dokie folks. <clears throat> so here's what we can do. We can change. We have some different options here. Let's create some classes, right? Because again, if we, we have an H1 tag, we have an H2 tag, we have different LIs. And so we can do a few things. Let us, we have the H1 and the H2 tag. I'm going to make a class for bands, Jordans, and Converse because I want those to have different, those to have different, um, here we go. Those two have different, and we're going to call this Vans, right? And li class equals, and we're going to try jlr. Okay, so let's go down here. We have our H1. Again, our H1 is Sherman Store, which is currently aligned to the center. And we want to change this text, right? So to do that, 
that we need to start here in Google Fonts. We have these two links. The thing we want to take first is this link portion. You're going to copy that. On the Mac, it's Command C. Go back. Go into your head. Remember, first you need to go into your head. So right after this title, you're going to press Enter in or Space. It'll get you right here. You're going to paste in that link. That is the first step. We're not done. Go back to Google Fonts. You then need to copy the actual CSS portion. Go back to Pop Code. Go into H1 on line 7. You're going to paste, and now we have it different, right? You can do the same thing for the other tags, including H2, LI, but I also created some classes, so I'm going to actually change those. We're going to change vans, and remember dot or period first, vans, and then I open and close in brackets, and let me make sure you all can see that. Opening and closing brackets, and let's go choose a different font. Let's go choose a different font. I'm going to choose something funky, something cool. Oh, I like this one. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to add this style. So what happened? As you can see, this one link, I see some things that are um, <clears throat> bolded, which is a little different. And instead of one rule, we have two CSS rules here. So what's happened is when you use Google Fonts, it automatically, the link automatically update, updates to include both elements. But now we have an additional specific rule for CSS. What you're going to do, again, take the entire Entire link here. Go to pop code. Where you put the first link, you are going to delete that. So where it says link, you're going to delete that. Delete. Now you're going to paste in this new link. Again, remember in the head on. Go back to Google Fonts. Now click this second. The second value rule, excuse me, only. The second rule only. And in here, bam, and Vans is different, okay? So these are just some of the ways that you're going to be able to do that. Now, your job in the independent practice is to help promote the fellowship to class. So once you've then the class, you'd go on to fellowship one, and then after that, fellowship two. So Code Nation needs your help. We need your help. You're going to select the H1 tag in CSS and give it a font family of Helvetica. So you need to go to Google Fonts and find Helvetica. Or you don't need Google Fonts, actually. You can just put the name Helvetica. Select the Code Nation company partners by their class attributes. So their class attributes include SeatGeek, Etsy, Amex, Google, and you need to give each of those a unique styling, okay? Once you've done that, please do not forget to submit your work. In Google Classroom, go ahead and submit this here by copying the link and submitting it, and then you're gonna complete the exit ticket questions that are in your Google Classroom. Thank you so much.